From the top of Mont Ventoux, welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, Tour de France riders are freaks, but can we learn anything from them? Yes, it might not be what you think. We've also got the outcome of our average man's epic sportive, what to sit on if you're cycling across the country naked, and we hear from Manon as she begins her training for steamboat gravel in earnest. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that the Tour de France is in the clutches of two of the most talented bike riders we have seen in a long time. Yeah, both today Pogacar and Wout van Aert have been incredible, not just by winning, but by ripping up the racing playbook in the process. Yeah, we also learned this week that Cadex might be about to release the world's fastest shopping bike. Just put a basket on it and ta-da! That's it. Now, if you have ever moaned, about the UCI rules constraining bike design. Take a look at that photo and then try and tell us that actually they're not there for our own good. This is what happens if you design a bike for triathletes who have few rules other seemingly than not being able to wear socks. You know what? I, I think I disagree. I think products focused on performance are great. And really? Even if that bike has a step through frame making it easy for old people to get on, if it's insanely fast, then you know, brilliant. It's not as if Calix don't make beautiful road products already. All right, okay, fair enough. Speaking of polarizing, as we are, like Brexit or the presidential elections, you lot seem to be split on the new Rafa Crocs. So, public service announcement, for the 50% of you that think they're hot, you will be able to buy a pair as of Friday. And for the 50% of you that think they are not, you only have to wait until Friday before you can take to social media and moan about the price of them and take the piss out of the people that have bought them. I like them. I'd, I'd get a set if they were made in my size, although they'd probably be classed as flippers. Or paddle boards? Paddle boards, yeah, water skis, whatever you like to call them. But I'd definitely make a use for that pink gilo pockets on the side. <laughs> I'm sure you could, mate. Take out another mortgage and it's yours. Well, I did actually get banned from the Giro d'Italia podium, sign on podium, for wearing uh, Birkenstocks. Apparently it didn't fit with the image of the sport. I was told to turn around and go and put my cycling shoes on. Really? Yeah, I refused. It was too far away. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, the difference between the Giro, where style standards are upheld, and the Tour de France, where anything goes when it comes to signing on, even Crocs. I thought I looked quite stylish in my Birkenstock, to be honest, <laughs> but I think maybe it was the bad haircut, combination of the bad haircut and the Birkenstock. Okay, hopefully we can find a photograph of you at the Giro in that outfit and then uh, you lot can be the judge of that as well. Uh, right then, moving on, as we mentioned, uh, we are inundated with amazing bike racing to watch at the moment, not just the Tour of France of course, but also the Giro d'Italia Donne which concluded at the weekend as well. Yeah, and riders have been on absolute stonking form. To the point where you have to think the riders competing in these races are complete freaks of nature, particularly the ones that always crop up at the top of the results sheet, like Annemiek van Vluten and the aforementioned today Pogacar and Wout van Aert. Yeah, now, of course, there is an awful lot of natural talent that goes into making a Pogacar a Pogacar, but there are definitely things that we can learn from these bike riders and then put into practice in our own cycling as well. First up, make a plan. Cycling teams and pro cycling, it just loves planning. Everything is planned from the start to the finish via 200 kilometers of frenetic racing. Plan your day. That's right. Breakfast, dinner, everything is planned. I'll confess, planning does not come naturally to me. Really? I didn't notice that, Si. Thanks, Connor. Uh, but I'm in awe. I'm in absolute awe of Tour de France teams, and I definitely think that all of us could take something from that, particularly if you've got an event coming up, whether it's a bike race or a sportif or you're going bikepacking for the weekend, take a leaf out of Tour de France teams and make a plan. Next up, grin and bear it. Cycling, it can hurt. I need to get a new saddle. <laughs> Cycling often hurts. Yes, it does. Cycling hurts quite a lot of the time. And it's at moments like this when we are hurting that we also like to assume that we're getting some sort of benefit at the same time. That's right. I've been self-flagellating for years, Connor. Um, look, mate, it's a family show. What are you doing in your spare time? Um, yeah, just keep that to you. It's, it's in, a... the, in the tour, though, sorry, sorry. In the tour, what riders do to get up, carry on and get that job done 
is at once eye-watering and also inspirational. That's right. Primoz Roglic, for example, got taken out by a rogue hay bale, then casually popped his dislocated shoulder back into his socket and set off in hot pursuit of the peloton across 20 kilometres of cobbles. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd advocate that, but the stories of what riders can do is just so inspirational, isn't it? It is, indeed. Um, but it's not all pain, either. This is your timely reminder that sometimes cycling slowly pays off. Cycling slowly can make you fast. Yeah, today Pogaccia's coach Inigo San Milan is a big fan of mitochondria, the power parts of our cells, and always likes to prescribe zone two level training to Pogaccia. Exactly, so anytime you see Tele Pogaccia absolutely smashing it, remember, ride slowly makes you fast, as long as you also do really fast stuff as well. 80-20. You know what else I also liked from the first week? I liked, love in fact, how even the very best riders in the world can put their own ambitions to one side to help out their mates. We saw it with Wout van Aert helping Jonas Vingo across the cobbles. We saw it with Alberto Betio helping Tele Pogaccia across the cobbles. Too soon, mate. Too soon. Possibly so. slightly too soon. Yeah, but you get my point. I mean, look, here is Team Jumbo Visma. There's like half the squad trying to lend their bikes to Jonas Binigo. Yeah, Isn't like that it. brilliant? Teamwork makes the dream work. It does indeed. Now, Thibaut Pino, he can tell us a thing or two about life, can't he? And at the Tour de France, he taught us that sometimes all you need is a hug. Poor old Thibaut, here he is taking a bag full of food and water to the face and then ending up in the arms of none other than Team EF's communications director, of all people. Pino was able to give us one final lesson for the rest day as well. Just a day after taking a feed bag to the face, he very nearly went and won a stage, and an epic one at that, having picked himself up. So fair play, t -Bert. Hopefully, he will be able to seal the deal in the remaining, what, 11 stages that we've got between now and Paris. So fingers firmly crossed. Speaking of never giving up as well, many of you will have been nervously thinking of our beginner cyclist, Killian Kelly, as he took on the fearsome Etap de Tour this past weekend. Did he make it? Did he make it, Si? Yes, he blew it well, did! Go on, Killian! Oh. What a legend. Four months ago, it took him over two hours to ride up Alpe de Zwift, and now he's conquered not only the legendary Alpe d'Huez, also Galibier and the Quart de Fer. Well done, Killian, what a man. Yeah, genuinely, that is one of the most inspirational stories we've had yeah, on GCN, is, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. Um, if you want to see how Killian got on at the attack, and I don't know about you, but I yeah, can't wait to see that, plus also loads more about his preparation for it, his backstory and everything else, then we are in the process of making a GCN Plus film about it. And um, we work quickly, so you won't be waiting too long for it, um, but stay tuned. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to seeing that one, including um, one scene when he may have uh, fallen into a bush. Yeah. He did have, sadly, an announcement that he made on Twitter, post a tap the tour, if you please um, get the violin music out there. Some personal news to announce. I am now officially retiring from riding a bicycle. <laughs> the That's what he thinks. Zwift Academy is yeah. coming up, Killian. Onwards and upwards, my man. Now, over to Manon. Speaking of onwards and upwards. I'm back with another update on how my training is going on the Wahoo System training plan for the Steamboat Gravel Race. If you didn't know, I'm training for an event that's over 200 kilometers on gravel. Whew, scary. Anyway, my training this week has gone really well. I managed to complete every session, but if you were to ask me how I'm feeling, I'd say very sore. My body is very sore. I can't remember the last time I trained multiple days in a row, back to back, without a rest, and my body is like, wow, what are you doing? And one thing I've actually noticed that I didn't think I would suffer with is a sore back. Because I haven't been used to doing, you know, these longer rides, spending this much time in the saddle, in this position, my back is a little bit sore. But one thing I found that really helps with us as, with the sore back is the yoga sessions. But yeah, the training has been going really well. Um, had some turbo sessions this week and for those of you who live in the UK you'll probably know it it's been very hot here and doing turbo sessions inside in the heat is not pleasant um I think I've got out on the road like three times this week which has been really good uh, really enjoy the road rides and when I first get on the bike out the road 
the first 30 minutes my legs are really sore and I'm like oh it's not gonna be a good day my legs are really sore but after about 30 minutes of pedaling I feel so much better and I've actually been feeling quite strong not that I've been doing any really long rides or on gravel it's just been on road two to three hours um but yeah I've been feeling really good so I'm really happy with how the training has gone this week um mentally it's been quite challenging um getting on the turbo after a full day of work when you kind of you know you just kind of want to lay on the sofa but trying to keep motivated and those mental sessions are really helping as well they're really short and i am really getting into those um so they've been really good as well but hoping for another really good week this week um so i will be back with another update next week Thanks Manon, some cycling shorts for you now. First up, Markoff have launched a new campaign aimed at breaking down barriers between women and bikes. No, not like that. For the whole of July, they will be donating 10% of profits from some of their bike cleaners to a range of non-profit organisations such as Cycle Sisters, Black Girls Do Bike, Homestretch Foundation and the Women's All Ride Collective, plus a few more as well. Yeah, good stuff. And you can follow the campaign using the hashtag move over. We think it's a great idea and a brilliant one to get behind too. Definitely, very cool. And this next piece of news is even cooler, especially if you like ice cream. So yes. we did this, sorry. Thanks mate, yeah. Um, if you are thinking of setting up your own solar powered e-bike ice cream business, then uh, well now you can for only 850 US dollars. We found this nifty piece of kit for sale on Alibaba of all places. Weighs 78 kilos, 170 watt solar panel, 108 to 500 liters of fridge space and six different colors. Plus it only takes 30 hours to put it together as well. Yeah, that's uh, quick enough, isn't it? I'm not sure it will take many KOMs, but maybe it ever a decent vanilla scoop. You could even ride it naked, like this pair from Scotland, if you're feeling brave. Although, we're unsure if you sell any ice cream <laughs> as a result. Colin Unsworth and Sadie Tan are cycling across Britain on their tandem, raising money for a rewilding projects in the mental health charity Mind. Yeah, however, they were left battered, bruised, although fortunately without any major injuries, after a driver purposely hit them, which is absolutely disgraceful. Unfortunately, police are investigating the, dis the uh, collision as well. Yeah, Mr. Unworth said in an interview with the Daily Mail that they had not been able to do the entire ride naked due to Scottish law. Public nudity is not a specific offence, but they were asked to cover up after a complaint. They also had to get dressed after being mobbed by youths on motorbikes. <laughs> The, the mind boggles. Mr. Unsworth also said it's been a bit of a personal challenge for them both, getting over the body shape thing and also challenging themselves to be comfortable without any clothes on. I reckon if you took your clothes off, you'd get mobbed as well, definitely. Anyway, good on them, to be fair. Um, they're also using bespoke merino sheepskin saddle covers to protect themselves from chafing. So just in case you're thinking of trying the same thing yourself. Yeah, I'll try that next time. Uh, a little bit more tech news for you now. Nog are launching a slimline bike alarm and tracking device. Vaseline probably would have worked as well, wouldn't yeah. it? And now we've seen something like this tracking device before, but back then, I've got to say, it didn't really resonate with me. Since then though, having had a beloved bike of mine stolen, uh, I'm now all over it. Apparently the battery lasts six months, and once you arm it, any movement will set off an 85 decibel alarm and send you a text, plus you can use Apple's Find Me app to keep track of it. Yeah, and it is Apple only at the moment, apparently, but it's got a claimed weight of less than 50 grams. It's waterproof, and it'll retail for 59 US dollars, which is pretty neat, isn't That's it? That's pretty cool. Now then, you have, of course, all been glued to the Tour de France and the Giro d'Italia, Donne. I would imagine. Anyway, um, a reminder though, if you're not making the most of the coverage on GCM Plus, we haven't got all territories for the Tour de France, but we got loads of them. So do make sure you check it out, particularly the breakaway shows pre and post with, um, well, with some great names and Dan as well. Yeah, and we've also got an amazing new documentary out on uh, GCM Plus this week too. Thomas Voigtler, what a legend. We'll remember him wearing the yellow jersey for so many days at the Tour de France. One of my first memories actually watching the race. Um, and I was lucky enough to race with him too. And uh, don't miss that one over on the GCM Plus app. It is a brilliant watch and I'd really recommend it. Yeah, there is a lot more to Tommy Voigtler than just gurning and short shorts. So uh, you will find out all of it in this documentary. Um, and whilst we're talking about cool stuff from here at GCN, a reminder that we've got a bit of a special offer at the moment, a racing bundle, including the amazing Fans Guide to Pro Cycling, which is um, basically 
not literally an A to Z of pro cycling, but it will tell you all you need to know whether you are new to the sport or a bit of an old hand. Um, so yeah, fantastic, fantastic book that one. So do check it out. Right, next up is time for hack forward slash bodge. I'm really good at that one, aren't I? And uh, first up, we have Wawa87, quick release to the rescue. Flat tire, I did not realize there were no tire levers in my saddlebag. I was far too far from home to ask my wife for SAG support. Never heard that one before. The SAG wagon. SAG wagon? Yes. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. Like the broom wagon. Yeah, okay. Also, it's the SAD wagon. But anyway, moving on. So I used my quick release skewer arm to get the tire out of the rim. I was able to replace the tube and inflate it with a CO2 canister and make it back home. So, um, there you go. I have actually seen that done before. One thing I recommend to everyone is to is to learn how to take a tire off without tire levers. It can be done yeah. just about any wheel when you know how. I'm pretty sure we've got a video. Yeah. I think I've definitely filmed a video at some point in the last decade about this. Um, so make sure you check it out. But um, but if you are still stuck, then your quick release will come in handy. Although not if you got through axles. Then you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah you to, but you strong um, thumbs and nails. I think that's a hack. Is that a hack for you? Oh, that's definitely a hack, yeah. Nice, <laughs> okay. Job. Next up, we got this from Pablo Gonzalez, who said, rollers are for peasants. Warming up for a mountain bike race uh, with a spin bike in the back of a pickup truck. Um, and it was 0 degrees centigrade, by the way. I mean, he's looking pretty classy up there, isn't he? Yeah, it's a funny one for me, this. I'm not sure if it's a hack or a bot. It's one of the first ones that's really stumped me. I mean, it's serving a purpose, it's doing it, but... I think it's a bodge, probably, isn't it? But yeah, an ingenious solution to a warming up problem. And actually, do you know one of the things right, I really don't like about the start of mountain bike races? Because people jump on rollers on their mountain bikes and a knobbly tire on rollers is the most irritating noise at a bike race. Not the best look. And then when you suddenly got like 100 people all doing that, it's yeah. like, it, honestly, it, that noise now makes me feel nervous. Swarm of bees. It's like I'm suddenly about to do a major race again. So, uh, so with that in mind, I'd say it's probably a bit of a hack. Okay. Um, well, I'm going bodge because I'm not sure it's needed. All right. But fair play to you either way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, moving on. What's next, Connor? This is from S Band DK, Roadside Hack Breaks Fixed with Tape. Ooh. Now, that is sketchy. That's very sketchy. Okay. On the way to see stage two of the Grand Depart, and uh, at Hooven, we saw that the front brake was snapped when we unpacked the bikes from the car. <gasps> Disaster. A nice lady found a zip tie and some electrical tape, then they were good to go. Fantastic day watching the Tour de France 2 racing together with thousands of happy people. Um, well, is it. Oh, I don't know. Is that is that dangerous? It feels dangerous to me. It does feel dangerous, but I guess you've still got one brake that works. One and a half brakes. And so. it allowed you to go and spectate the Tour de France, which uh, That's a hack. was in Denmark for the first time. That's definitely a hack. Oh, I think it is a hack, isn't it? You know, it's like a roadside hack. Um, I wouldn't so, yeah. trust Hank with this setup, but if you're riding it carefully, then... Would you trust Hank with anything? No, no. that's a good point. Yeah, yeah okay. That's a good point. Uh, right, Desert Dude, um, bike incarcerated. So here's a story. I normally lock my pride and joy away in a guest bathroom. After an early morning ride, I stored it away and closed the door. I later heard an ominous bang, only to find that the bike had fallen over and perfectly blocked the door from being opened. <sighs> Much thought and consternation ensued, and of course, an unhappy wife I ended up... <laughs> I ended up cutting a hole in the door, lifting the bike up through the hole, oh my and eventually gosh. opening the door. Bike one, door nil, and of course, much abuse from the missus. <laughs> that is absolutely <laughs> genius, and you must have been gutted. That is a sticky situation to find yourself. It in. is, isn't it? Well, especially now, looking at that door, you can get in trouble for bathroom doors that look like that, can't you? Can. You? you can. I mean, at least it's not a direct view of the, uh, the plopper. But um, well, but I don't know. I still think that side, side, side of glance. Anyone using your guest bathroom and now, the smell would seep through. The it's hole. a good point. It is a good point. I can, genuinely, that imagine must have been, that. I can just imagine the future just be like, oh no, surely not. Um, but looking at your bike, I'd say it's definitely the cheaper option, cutting the hole in the door as opposed to just ramming your bike shut. Surely you could have got the bike. No, you couldn't though. Oh, yeah, you couldn't ram the bike. That? You're stuck. Oh. True story, I once uh, got locked in a bathroom here at um, GCM. Did you? Yeah, the lock, the lock snapped and I spent all morning in a uh, in the bathroom. And then when I finally got let out, all anyone could ask me about was why on earth I was in the bathroom with my laptop. But um, it was a fair question, I guess, but I had been able to do quite a lot of work. Yeah, so at least you could plan, plan some new videos in there. Exactly, mate, exactly. 
Oh, no, there we go. There's some crackers this week, weren't there? Well, we also have some competition winners, don't we, Si? We do indeed. This is for the Cell Italia competition that we ran a couple of weeks ago. Who are the lucky winners, Karen? Well, lucky winners, drum roll please, Si. First up, Michelle Go Goki, sorry if I've got that one wrong. Also, Machiel Sobering and George Volgarakis. There you go, congratulations to you three. That's absolutely awesome. Let's get in touch and um, yeah, prize winners, there you go. Caption competition now, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. A reminder, if you need it, that um, they're all available to buy in the GCN shop, but these yellow ones are available for a limited time in the month of July for obvious reasons. Um, this was the photo that we gave you last week. Rigoberto Aran doing his best Thor slash Viking impression, I think, at the yeah. Grand Depart. Who did we select, Connor, as the winner? Well, the winner of this one is Oscar. Congratulations to you. And the, uh, the caption was Rigoberto. I didn't hear if he said, let's go biking or let's go Viking. So I just went with both. <laughs> uh, I like that. I like yeah, that very I much. I like going Viking every now and again. Do you? I do, yeah. Uh, it's something I do on a Friday, every other Friday. I bet you make quite a terrifying Viking, actually, don't you? Yeah, I presume I might do. If uh, Yeah, I'm not very terrifying, though, really. Um, I don't know, mate, if you sit on bike thieves. Um, right, this is a photo that we're going to give you for this week. This is Wout van Aert, resplendent in his yellow jersey, uh, talking to Magnus Court, resplendent in his polka dot jersey. Um, I'm going to have a go, because I've got an idea of what they're talking about. Go on, then, go for it. So, you serious, Magnus? They make you wear Crocs. <laughs> quite like that one, actually. Thanks, mate. That was like almost that. like genuine laughter, I felt. <laughs> nearly, nearly that. Um, yeah, I, I was going to say, well, for not, I'm going to attack here, 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 here. <laughs> that's, okay. that's, that's genuine laughter as well, actually. Yeah, Two bangers, laughter, yeah. Let's, Put it there. Bump ourselves. Right, if you think you can match either of those, and you probably can, then stick your caption in the comment section down below. We'll pick a winner next week, and uh, you'll get your chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. Right, should we move on, Connor? Yep, yeah, we have uh, our comments, comments of the week. Well, that's channel. it. We pulled out a few, didn't we, from the, uh, the Dan Martin, like former legendary pro bike rider, tackling... Fort William Downhill World Cup track. Oh, um, it was unbelievable. One of the hardest like tracks, courses, whatever you want to call it, that I've ever witnessed. I mean, I could barely walk down it yeah. myself. Um, did manage to make it down eventually. Uh, no footage existed of that, of me doing it on my bike. Yeah, weird that. Yeah. Um, but some, some great comments. Garda S, I knew Dan Martin was a good person. As he was facing death and dismemberment, he was concerned about how Connor was getting down the mountain. Um, how cruel is GCN? I'm not sure he was concerned and more envious, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, I was going to say, he's a nice guy, you know. I mean, he's looking out for me while he was being sent off the side of a cliff. Yeah, uh, and then Angela G, uh, definitely going to need to see Connor descend this same run with the camera on. Having seen you ride a mountain bike, I'm not entirely sure you'd have got down there, would you? Well, I did actually do a, a video with GMBN where I did, you know, jumps and tricks and all that. And That's what I mean, we watched sad. it. Yeah, yeah. But I, was, I thought I was good in that. I went, it fell fast. I mean, I was hitting those berms, <laughs> hitting them like I was like toboggan style. Yeah. Wasn't it? Is that not what everyone does? Yeah, no, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. It, was, it was brilliant. That, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Um, but anyway, if you haven't seen that video yet, do make sure you give it a watch because, um, well, I've always been interested to know just how good bike handling skills are of out and out roadies. And you can you can judge it on that video, can't you? You can, you can. You um, can. Right got, then. Yeah, well, I was going to say, we've got a lot of fun videos coming up on the channel. We do. This week, on Wednesday, we've got surprising things I discovered as a pro cyclist. This um, is you, isn't it? It is, it is me. <laughs> uh, so tune into that one. Uh, I did, yeah, it wasn't always what I was expecting. No, I can imagine that. Um, and then on Thursday, we have how to get more out of your power meter. And on Friday, we tried old training methods. We did indeed. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, then Saturday, we got an interesting one. So this is the battle of the best, right? If you've been around in cycling for like more than a couple of years, everyone's got like a favorite group set, okay? And so Ollie, Alex and I plucked our favorites from the eras and uh, we've each tried to explain why we think they're the best. So uh, you've got to make sure you check that one out. Uh, and then on Sunday, another one for your diaries. Hank has been after this for a long, long time. He finally got his wish. His dream, in fact, came true. He got to race a long border down an Alp. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's, 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 it's incredible. I've seen some of it. It's absolutely mind-blowing, some of the footage. Yeah, they got racing drones. They got all sorts of stuff. So this is Hank uh, racing a longboarder. Plus, over on GCN Tech, Ollie's over at Eurobike this week in Nice. There's loads of amazing tech content coming out on GCN Tech too. That's quite a lot going on. That is it? a lot. I mean, it's hang to a T, isn't it? Just racing down a mountain. It's like every idea, something to do with, you know, jumping off a cliff racing down a mountain. Basically, yeah. Um, they all survived. So, uh, you know, you'd be pleased to hear. Yeah. Um, just about. Uh, right. That's it. Connor needs to go to bed because uh, he spent most of last week sharing a tent with Marcel Kittel. Yeah, I honestly haven't slept since last week's uh, GCN show. <laughs> not not well, anyway. Actually, quite sleep. I slept quite well with Marcel. We just ended up riding so far. I, I always and um, the ride was always a lot longer than I told Marcel each day. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slightly sleep deprived today, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a fun video, and you'll be able to watch it very soon. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Of course, Connor was bike packing with Marcel Kittel and we filmed it, so, uh, so yeah, stay tuned. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up as well, and we'll see you next week. See you, Rob.